This story here is about the hardest moment of our lives. A moment when we got stuck in Iran with no way out. To sum it up, the situation is that our passports were taken away from us and uh, we are stuck in a Iran city. At the mercy of some worker in the government. Have you ever in your life felt truly stuck? Experienced a moment where there seems to be no way forward and dreams that brought you to that place stop making sense? I don't know why it always happens to us. I'm sure you know this feeling if you've ever lost the love that you would have sacrificed yourself for. Or maybe you were denied an opportunity that you spent years working for. As it turns out, there's another way to feel such despair. And so in this video, we want to share with you one of the hardest moments of our lives. A moment where we were totally stuck in a run, ready to abandon our goals and dreams, just to feel safe again. But for all of this to make sense, I want to start this journey from the beginning, from the day we entered Iran. Those of you who have been on this channel before surely know that together with my partner Lizu, we are currently driving our van Freya from Europe to Japan. And although we knew that the political situation in Iran was rough, then there was also no way of avoiding this country and so it had to be done. That's the border over there. We are driving to Iran. Already! It's coming real quickly and uh, I'm ner nervous, nervous now, nervous now. On the first day here, we did the regular things that people do. You know, first became conservative citizens to comply with the local laws and regulations. Then we realized that our phones are quite useless here due to the strict restrictions on the internet. And finally, to raise our moods a little, we exchanged some money and became millionaires. We just exchanged 100 euros and we got almost 4 million of local currencies. Oh, and by the way, since there was no internet, of course, we got ripped off. So it's no surprise that this guy was so happy. He got a really good profit out of us. Yet there was still one thing that kept us uneasy. The fact that we had not yet received a visa for the next country after Iran. Very stressed. It has been a very hard day. But we told ourselves everything would be alright as the border crossing to Pakistan was still weeks away. In the next few days we slowly started to get to know Iran as a whole. We saw the mountains. Hi. But it looks beautiful, just the vibrant greens, mountains, blue blue sky. Discover the history of ancient people that used to live here. Yeah, believe it or not, this mud brick pyramid is more than 3,000 years old. It's a child's footprint from 3,200 years ago. But we also got to see the kind loka that live here today. I must say that it felt quite special teaching Christmas songs to people our age who were studying to be composers but had never heard those melodies before. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! After leaving our new friends the next day, we finally got to know the side of Iran that many people associated with the deserts. Deserts here come in all shapes and sizes. Some are made of gravel and have roads running through them. But in such deserts, you have to be careful because apparently it's quite straightforward. They're just all over the road. <laughs> <laughs> Camels all over the road. Thank you for the warning. Yeah, I know that sounds funny, but darn, this sign actually wasn't lying. Salam just stopped on the side of the road and then there are deserts that look more like mountains they are made of rocks and almost feel like they do not belong on our planet and of course 
there are also deserts that look exactly like we have seen them in the movies, like endless oceans of sand. And in one of such deserts, we actually spent our last days of Christmas. Oh, and I just remembered, I think I made a cheesy joke before reaching this desert. And we can't let the joke go to waste, can we? You think Christmas shopping is expensive in your country? We just spent 10 million riyals buying food for Christmas. Which is 25 euros, by the way. The time in a desert was actually quite amazing. And it's one of the most memorable Christmases of our lives. Of course, I just have to mention that the last Christmas I spent alone somewhere in France. So maybe there's not a lot to compare with, but that's just the life of a traveler. Sometimes it's very lonely. Anyways, this year we hiked on the Golden Ocean. Seriously failed on trying to surf down a sand dune. I really thought it would be fun. And of course, cooked good food that had cost us millions. Yet, there was something more this desert wanted us to remember it by. During the last night in our camp, it had started raining. We were staying in the desert for three nights, four days, and it started raining last night. And everything around us has turned into mud. Like, really, rain in the desert, what are the odds? After our attempt to escape, we were stuck. Are we stuck already? Stuck in a desert, in the middle of nowhere, with our food running out and no one around for kilometers on end. Fortunately, our van was stuck on a downward slope and still had momentum. So with the help of our, well, toilet shower, we were able to dig ourselves out and learned that if you're stuck but still have momentum, then it is possible to get yourself going by working hard and smart. First win, first win. <laughs> but being stuck in a desert is definitely not what this video is about. And as we soon learned, there was much worse ways to be stuck in Iran. I'm scared. For the next week or two, we stayed away from soft, sandy places and instead visited bigger cities of the country. First was Esfahan, glorious city known for its grand architecture, colorful markets, and some of the most bizarre bridges we have ever seen. The bridges themselves were actually quite magnificent, but what made them special was something else. No swimming. Does this qualify as swimming? This river that used to split the town in two hasn't seen water for the last five years. And many of the locals told us with a tear in their eyes that this ecological catastrophe was caused by a dam built up river for a reason nobody really understands. After Esfahan, we saw Yazd, a desert city that was a religious capital of ancient Persia. Before Islam, Zoroastrianism was the prominent religion of this land. And next to modern mosques, we could still see signs of the historic ways from places called silent towers, where once humans were sent on their last journey, to a fire temple, where a holy flame has been now burning for more than 1500 years. But the history did not end with the big cities. Some places we found by accident. I guess it's the beauty and curse of Iran. There's just a historic castle and not a single mark on the map. Thanks to Iran's dry and stable climate, the old ruins simply don't crumble. There are traces of ancient civilization everywhere. They were not even marked on the map. Others we had Mark on our journey way before entering the country because history books are filled with paragraphs telling stories about those magnificent cities of old. But there was still one thing that stayed at the back of our minds. Weeks had gone by and our Iranian visa was running out. 
but we still hadn't received our visa for the next country, Pakistan. For the last leg of our journey, we had decided to see the southern part of this land, the magical islands in Persian Gulf. The journey there was pleasant. As soon as we got to the seaside, the weather changed completely. The snow and cold we had seen inland had suddenly turned to warmth and sunshine. Even the endless oil and gas fields we saw on the roadside did not damper our mood. And in an odd way, we found the gas fires beautiful. It looks quite weird. In the darkness, just fires burning, lighting up the night. We spent days discovering the beautiful islands of Iran, swam in a warm ocean, and saw the side of this country we never knew existed. It was relatively free, and many Iranians themselves came here to escape the rules and laws of big cities. And by following their example, we also found a place near the ocean to finally sort out the visa situation. It was near impossible to reach the outside world from Iran. And so one by one, we let our friends and family call the embassies. After days of trying, we finally got an answer. They had mistakenly sent their application to the wrong embassy in Poland. And as we couldn't intend an interview there, they rejected our visa. Like, what the heck are we supposed to do? And the Polish embassy has been doing nothing for three months. And now they cancel it. We had five days left to legally stay in Iran. And suddenly, in our despair, something else happened. Our old nemesis. I don't know why it always happens to us. In our moment of panic, we missed the fact that it had been pouring down rain for hours. And once again, we were stuck. It rained for two days straight and time was no longer on our side. We tried everything but only got ourselves deeper and deeper in the mud. Nothing helped. At this moment we felt utterly stuck. Thinking of ways how to leave Iran before it was too late. Joey said. Even considering flying out of the country, leaving behind our dream and our home. The only thing we could do in the meanwhile, was to let our Pakistani friend Vajid know about their visa situation. And he told us that he would reapply for us, since it was impossible to do for us with all the restrictions on the internet. But honestly, it really did not lift our mood. Last time, it took three months and we got rejected. Now with one rejection already in the papers, and three days left on our Iranian visa, it looked like our dream was lost. On the third day, the rain stopped. And due to a happy coincidence, some locals from Shiraz had also made their way on this island to spend some time here. It took hours of digging and pulling. But finally, we were out again. <laughs> <laughs> I remember trying to wash off the mud in the ocean and thought to myself It was the second time we had been stuck in Iran This time for two and a half days And what we learned was that sometimes our own efforts are just not enough <laughs> He's an angel! He's an angel! And there is no shame in asking the help of a friend it felt good to be able to move again, but we knew that our troubles were far from over. We spent the evening with a new friends, once again discovering the beauty of Iranian nature and people. But we also picked their brain for solutions. It's really a weird feeling when you cannot search the internet for solutions. But after hours of thinking and talking, it finally seemed that there might be a way out. Next morning, we left the island in a hurry and started to put everything we had learned to a good use. We messaged our friends back home for them to call the Pakistani embassy to get the visa process going. But this wasn't it. We also knew that now, since we had momentum, we had to act ourselves. And so, 
we drove to the nearest big city to find a place where we could extend our visa. It is a beautiful Sunday in Iran and today, as it is Sunday, is a day to get things done. So paperwork and we are gonna go and try to get our visa extended in Iran. In just two days, we would become illegal immigrants in this country. And with current political situation, it was not a good place to be. We made it to the office and just as we thought that finally things might start going our way, the final blow. The people from the visa office knew only one phrase in English, system error. In hand gestures, they added that we should return in two days. But that wasn't it. They also kept our passports. The worst had happened. We were in Iran, soon becoming illegal immigrants without passports. At the mercy of some worker in the government. The next day was simply devastating. We were on the last day of our visa, stuck and totally in the mercy of some government official. We didn't even have documents anymore to leave the country by plane, if need be. And to this day, we don't know if there was really a system error or our passport just had to be examined by some secret service agent. But when we finally returned to the office, there was no more questions asked. They gave us the extension and it felt liberating to have time again. It's either a good time or a good story and, and this was definitely not a good time. But as in many cases, good news tend to stick together. And this time they also came in a group. We found out from our Pakistani friend that our applications had been processed and we were now expected to attend a visa interview here in Iran. It is hard to put in words how good it felt to be able to continue our journey. It had taken all the patience and skill from both us and our friends to be back on the road again, but we had made it. And our dream to drive from Europe to Japan was once again alive. Friends, this here was our last adventure from Iran. It is definitely the hardest country we have traveled through so far. And in the next video, we want to show you how we crossed one of the craziest borders on earth, how we spent many days and nights sleeping and living next to prisoners, and how finally we had to escape Pakistani police to once again be free. Until then, make sure to check out our previous Iranian videos to understand better this amazing culture and current situation. And we will see you again on this channel in a little bit less than a week. Take care, my friends. Bye.